We are live, and yeah, uh, we're, we're missing Dr. V today, but uh, yes. he's, taking no, a, Dr. V. he's taking a well-deserved break. So yes. just, we're going to uh, give him a break every once in a while. So every today. once in a while, you know, he's, been, he's been working pretty hard over here, and uh, yes. he, he looks like he needs a little time off. So we gave him some. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, time off is a topic that I was talking to my uh, some other friends the other day um, because we were all this was three of us and the three of us were talking mm -hmm. like it's um we were overwhelmed and and felt under pressure and many times it's not the that the workload is too high it's it's you know you haven't rested for a while you haven't been on vacation yeah. so you're running on um, on low empty. recharge running on empty <laughs> uh, and and that sort of thing so i'm sure you and everybody else knows how that feels right yeah, you know that's not that's not a bad thing to uh, talk about a little bit today because um, yeah. it uh, it's funny you know we've been working on a new project and um, we really have been burning the candle at both ends mm -hmm. in the middle yeah. and um, it that can be challenging so um, mm -hmm. and plus plus we've all had like a lot of other stuff going on it's been kind of a uh, a wild and crazy beginning to summer I think for yeah. a lot of people. I don't know if you feel like you're going through the same thing, but boy, I sure have yeah. had a lot of different things going on. And uh, you're right. Though. Very yeah. important to take the time off because you got to recharge. Yes. Recharging is so important. So a few things that are going on that they work against me. Mm. One is um, I usually don't pay attention to like when is the next holiday coming up and what am I going to do with summer is coming up. Or, or plan it in advance, right? Uh, mm -hmm. um, and adapting to what's right in front of me and being spontaneous always has been working for me. Um, yet I realize, you know, I can still benefit from some planned recharging time and, and plan it in advance. And I had this model that I have talked about it with my clients and in my previous presentations, mm -hmm. um, either in person or otherwise with them. And I still think it's a good idea and it's doable. Um, even if, if it's not 100%, even if, it, if you get close to that. And um, with my other friends, we were just talking about it the other day. Um, so I'm not very much motivated to, to get to implement it. So let me um, like, uh, quickly exp try to explain it here. So right. we know the, the pattern of intermittent things is, is a thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, when it comes to workout, they call it HIT, um, high intern intensity interval training. I think that's what it is. So exactly. basically, you work for two minutes, rest for one minute, that kind of a thing. We yes. know, and we have talked about the Pomodoro system where it comes to the mm -hmm. 25 minutes, 10 minute break, five minute break. So work, break, work, break. Um, this can also um, apply to much longer time frame, like a year kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, so we know that we're always more productive. We do better work just before before going to uh, on a trip, on a vacation, or just mm -hmm. coming back home. So right. there are these two more productive periods around the rest or the recovery time. You're getting ready to go, and you're just coming back from it. Um, so, sure. yes. So um, introducing um, more break times means you know, better results and more productivity, the same way mm -hmm. that Pomodoro works. Mm -hmm. And um, the idea came to me when I, many years ago, I listened to a talk by Steven Zagmeister and he was talking about, you know, every seven years he takes a whole full year off. And I thought, you know, Love that idea. yeah, in a one year period, it can be done too. So um, I'm, I use the, the, you know, complete control of your time or no control of your time as in two ends of the X spectrum mm. to, to give myself a clarity around that. So on the, on the end that you, someone doesn't have any control, they have a nine to five job and the usual, the, you know, the, the minimum deal is that they have to work for 50 weeks and they get two weeks off. Um, so we expect people to just grind it out for 50 weeks and work on things and, and we know the, the final month or two, the final 10 weeks or eight weeks or so, it's just crawling on there. <laughs> and it's it's hard progress. And for two weeks, that's usually, we we may even take the work with us again. Um, and two weeks is, is not enough. Um, so what if 
where we, we change that model. Now I'm gonna, so that's the least amount of control of your time and energy, yeah. let's go to most amount of control of time of energy. So if one year is 52 weeks mm -hmm. and I have to work for 50 weeks of them, if I manage my time and energy better, I am sure I can get the same results in 40 weeks. Whatever I could do in 50 weeks, I can do it in 40 weeks. That means now in a 52 week year, I have 12 weeks of vacation. Mm -hmm. um, but going back to the idea of, of intermittent uh, interval. Um, so if a year is 52 weeks, I can divide it into four 13 week periods. Um, and uh, let's, let's go on sprints, like 10 weeks of um, really focused work, high productive work, three weeks of vacation, 10, three, 10, three, 10, three. Um, that's the 40 weeks, four 10 week period. And in that three weeks, you, you know, you have three, three uh, trips or travel or rest or, or the, it could be two week thing. And you come back for the last one week of clarifying and brainstorming and planning, what am I going to get done in the next week, 10 weeks. And because you know, when it starts and you're going to go for 10 weeks and after that, there's going to be a non-negotiable break. So like book the travel in advance kind of a situation, 10 sprints of 10 week period sounded like a good idea to me. So, um, as I told you, being, um, adaptive and responsive, I'm a, a spontaneous, I haven't implemented this, but just the other day I was thinking, um, you know what, I'm going to give myself a few months to automate as much as I can, optimize as much as I can, outsource as much mm -hmm. as I can. So, so those three weeks that I am not, not going to be around or, you know, I guess minimal interaction, things are still happening. Um, but my service delivery, my, uh, my value that I deliver to my clients can be done in 10 week periods and, and go from there. So, um, that's what I have in mind. And, um, I'm going to start uh, working on implementing it. That's a good I song. guess I'm going to report back in future <laughs> calls. I'm, I'm anxious that's the idea works out for you. I know that yeah, um, sure. me, me personally, has been very hard to take uh, a lot of time off this summer. You know, I, I've uh, taken quite a few weekends, uh, snuck in a few days here and there, but yeah. it's been hard to take, you know, big blocks of time, like uh, like a two-week time period or three-week time period to actually rest and relax and, you know, take some yeah. time off. Um, so the one thing that I found helps me a lot is, um, you know, if I miss my morning routine, it really messes up my day yeah. to start with that. But the other thing is that um, during the day, you know, I will sneak out and I'll take um, an hour or two to walk around. Mm -hmm. um, I'll sneak in a little meditation time during the day. Yeah. And so I kind of get like a mini rest or mini, vaca mini vacation yes. during the daytime as I'm working. And that, that, that certainly helps me along a lot. Yeah. So yeah. what is your morning routine? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, I follow the um, the Miracle Morning routine a little bit. Mm. It's, it's it's very similar to that, a little bit different. So for people who are not familiar with that, what's in there? So essentially, the, the way the day starts is uh, exercise, visualization, um, prayer, prayer meditation, mm -hmm. um, do a little bit of journaling in the morning. So those are all kind of the important pieces of it. And, um, I, you know, I find if I don't start my day that way, I, I just get off to a horrible start. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exercise is another piece of it. I don't think I mentioned exercise. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Um, so that's um, two things comes to my mind when you said that. Um, mm. Because I, I do know that having a morning routine and get yourself ready and all of that is mm -hmm. important. Many times it starts for me the, the night before, right? getting right. ready, what time do I need to go to bed and what kind of a rest do I want to have? And so I can have a good morning and morning routine and all of that. Yes. Um, it, it contributes a lot. And uh, definitely. Yeah. You know how sometimes we, we lose um, a sight of what, why the, the big why or why we're doing things um, in the first place. So morning routine, like other things can also become its own thing now <laughs> as opposed to serving other things in our life. So I remember having this conversation with a friend yeah. 
few months ago mm. um, that she was she just sent me a message that I am so trying to get my modern routine going and and mm. everything is um, I still not have you know the, the kind of a day that I want and um, so too much energy was being spent on the morning routine mm. and that losing sight kind of a thing and I love that so um, I agree and I like what you said and morning routines are, are very helpful and I think we can even make it better by keep reminding ourselves why are we doing this so yes um, the 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 conclusion of that conversation was um, we do all of these things try to work and morning routine all of that um, but by switching we can do a better job by switching our expectation of this whole thing is all about what kind of a day I, would you, would, do I like to have by the end of it? Yeah. Right. Instead of exactly. having the expectations of a strong start, we want to have a day that, however, it started with good morning routine, without stuff came up, stuff could control, couldn't control. By yeah. the end of it, we look back at the day, say, you know what? Overall, I performed well today. I responded well today. The morning routine helped. The the way that I didn't let things overwhelm me. Those midday walks or meditations and mini vacations you mentioned mm -hmm. by the end of it so the goal of 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 having a good day by the end of it and we look back and say you know what that was a good day yeah it's kind of a system for having a productive day and yes. um you know the very first thing i found when i started to do it i one i one i found it very hard to shift into that yeah. mode but once i got into that mode by the end of that i actually felt like I'd hit a productive day already if I didn't do anything else. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I've already read a couple chapters of a book. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've really gotten ahead in a lot of different ways. And so um, it does. It just helps you get off to a great start. Yes. Um, tell me about your midday rest and recharge. Yeah. So midday, I try to um, sneak out and take like a two-hour walk. Um, I'll tend to go down and maybe it won't be that long. A lot of times I'll even mix a little bit of pleasurable work in with it. Mm -hmm. So I'll go down to our local park. We've got two local parks actually. One's right at the end of my cul-de-sac. Yeah. So it makes it really easy for me to just go and take a walk. Uh, yeah. The second place is we've got a park that um, was a monument to um, several people who were on the flights um, the day of the World Trade Center. Oh, um, and so um, the, it's a beautiful park. Um, I, I think it's about uh, 12, 15 acres, something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, I usually go down there and take a long walk around through the woods. Um, it's uh, it, it's formerly a zoo. Mm -hmm. It was a zoo at one point. So it's a, it's a very attractive place to walk around. Yes, and, yes. Um, and designed for walking. Designed for walking. And the great thing is, you know, some of my best ideas come as I'm walking around. I'll take a, yeah, a, yeah sometimes I'll take like a little um, sticky notepad and a yes. pen and stick it in my pocket or uh, make some notes on my phone as I'm walking around. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. And there is and yeah. a, there is very much difference. There is a big difference between writing with pen and paper or, or the notes app yeah, on the phone. Is. There yeah. is the, the big thing is I don't want to forget what I came you know the thought that came I came up with in the first place. Mm -hmm. So for me that's the biggest part. But there is a big difference between writing it down yeah. and, uh, and getting it recorded. Have I mentioned? Um, and let me see, it's called NSDR. No, I don't think so. Yeah, that's um, I follow um, Dr. Um, Andrew Huberman. Uh, his his podcast is called Huberman Lab, neuroscientist, and he um, his podcast is I re highly recommend it to everyone. It's all around uh, uh, you know our our neurology, and he has a lot of conversations about everything from motivation to productivity to mm. high performance and and that sort of thing. So in uh, I heard him actually being interviewed on another podcast that he was talking about not NSDR, which is non-sleep deep rest. Okay. So NSDR, non-sleep deep rest. And he mentioned um, it's it's a form of, let's not call it meditation, but yeah. it's a form of, of just um, slowing things down and, and going through it. Um, he mentioned uh, that uh, 
the like um, pe higher level people at Google and other places, they do that in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. um, there are YouTube videos that you can, and apps too, but YouTube videos that you can basically follow the, the, the prompts and the prompts is um, basically, first of all, it's okay even if you fall asleep in the middle of it. Right. But it's usually like a 20, 25 kind of a thing. And the prompts um, are like, um, like pay attention to your big toe. Mm. Now pay attention to your, you know, the toe beside it. Then, you know, different parts of the body, it moves up and down and goes back and forth. And, okay. and you're just, you know, closing your eyes and following the prompt. And this is that oh, whole that's idea that's of, of your attention being like a, like a light bulb, which is basically like the room or you make it like a spotlight on one thing. Presence. That's, yeah. And, and it's like attention, focus. That's the difference. And, and you just follow the prompt of listening to all of that. There are parts of it that is about uh, uh, imagine the room that you're in. Now mm -hmm. listen to, to the sounds that you're hearing. Now pick one of the sounds and just listen to this. So it's a 25 minutes of um, mm -hmm. non-sleep, an NSDR, right? Non-sleep deep. deep rest. Um, yeah rest um that seems i have done it only a few times and i like to do it more but that seems like a very good uh, like plug in recharge kind of thing for 25 minutes in the in the slump the afternoon um that we cannot push it much um much work out anyway um uh, so it seems like a good method that i recently heard about it as i said i only only tried it a few times i recommend it to a bunch of people they all liked it so that's something that I want to um, um, experiment more with. So uh, yeah, I, uh, I found a uh, YouTube video that I um, that I found very helpful. Let me just uh, see if I can give share more information about it. Wow. Mm. It's called, you know, again, uh, it's by a channel, which also an app called okay. Made for, all one word. Oh yeah. Okay, I hope I am pronouncing it correctly. So made like M A D E F O R, made for, one made word. For. Yeah. Okay, and the logo looks like an M with a. Um, and that's a little the channel. Thing. Yeah, that's the name of the channel. So they okay. have a bunch of videos and interviews, and one of them is uh, I'm looking at this. This is a 23 point, 23 minute kind of a thing. A non-sleep depressed NSDR, a science-supported tool for de-stress and relaxation. So I just, you know, run that audio and uh, do the thing. It's funny, um, you know, over the years, I, I, I never realized how many different types of meditation there are. Mm. Uh, and, um, you know, and for different things. Yes. And it's kind of funny. I, um, I did a workshop a couple of weeks ago for my friend Ken Stone. Mm. And you you know Ken you've met you've met Ken before but Ken um, has a tendency to do some very very deep work, and you go very deeply into meditation a lot of times when you're working with him, and so I uh, I they ran into a jam a couple of weeks ago, they're missing the the guy that was supposed to do their Zoom for them, and so he says John I know it's last minute but could you would you please, and I said of course Ken you know why why wouldn't I do that yeah. but. I was a little concerned about it because Ken's work is like so deep that at times when I'm monitoring it on Zoom, I just like go under. <laughs> get, get lost in it. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I like, I, I like ah, sleep. I, go to I trance. Like, yeah. And um, so this actually happened to me the other, the, when I was doing it, I'm like doing this last part of it yeah. and I get, and I know nothing's going to go wrong because I've got like backups on backups that, you know, yeah. I, I know nothing's going to happen, even if that did happen to me. But um, so we're going along through this last part of it. And all of a sudden I woke up and I'm like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> I've, I've missed the portion of this uh, this workshop. So that's a very, very difficult uh, um, type of workshop to do for, for somebody who works in video. Yes. Um, yes. especially if you're highly susceptible to, you know, trance states and all of that. And yeah. so, yeah, yeah I have to have your headphones on and I call my phone some rock off. and roll music in yeah. your ears. Something else going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> I did want to listen 
because the um, the prompts are so important to make sure that you know everybody's questions are getting answered and all of that. Yeah. And, and it really wasn't a big big deal that um, I spaced out there for a short period. <laughs> but it was funny nonetheless because it's not something that usually happens to me in some of the work that I do. But um, yes. it was yes. fun. Those are certain unique experiences. A very um, unique. thing that I wanted to do more, get into more, is uh, is breath work. Mm. I have had to try that a few times, and again, I like that too. Um, especially when it comes to like clarity. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's a everyday kind of a thing or not, but it's certainly you know every few days or once it a week. Can be. I think it can be. I have a friend who does a lot of that. Um, I think it could be an everyday kind of thing, but um, for me, I don't think it would would be. I yeah. Be more, I think it would be more of a once or twice a week, a couple times a week yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, that uh, that kind of a like a setting in intentions for the week, or mm -hmm. or uh, bringing yourself back to the track, kind of a thing. Yep. Um, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. But I do, I do find that, um, you know, any of that stuff, you know, so important to kind of work into your day and break up the, the monotony of it, get some motion, move around, yeah. Yeah. you know, anything like that can really, um, really make your day so much better. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's just a matter of um, like moving from uh, your desk to dining table mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of thing, um, which reminds me of another question that I wanted to ask you. Do you find, or do you have have you identified different times of the day for different type of work for yourself? That's an interesting question. I have not exactly done that. Mm. Like I've never been one that found it easier to do a particular kind of work at right. one type of day or another. Mm. Which is kind of you know. I don't know if that's have we not. talked about the idea of peak time? Peak time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's two hour period, somewhere between nineteen minutes to two hour period in a day, mm -hmm. that we are at our peak. And if it's yeah. usually most people are in the morning. Um, um, I guess majority are around nine, ten, eleven a.m. kind of thing. Um, I'm also in that time zone, but there are people that you know their peak time could be I don't know, midnight to two a.m. Certainly, a lot of uh, like programmers. <laughs> are are in that uh, peak time kind of thing. Um, I found I have two peak times. Yes. For me, usually it's like around eleven to one. Yeah. Is one of them, and then um, every once in a while, I'll have a because uh, I used to do a lot of my work at night. I used to yeah. be like a real night owl, and um, I find that you know, like between mid midnight or eleven. Mm -hmm. And one or two, okay. Is like so. Here's what I'm really curious about: yeah. Are those two peak times the same type of work? They are usually. Hmm, that's an interesting question. I have done the same kind of work at both times. Yes. But I don't know if one is a little more specialized for another type of work. Yeah. Than yeah. Let me tell you what I found out, and maybe you can, you know, go back in your memory and see. Yeah. Because. I, when I paid attention to peak time, and we have different type of work, so some mm -hmm. some of them have their own peak time, right? General peak time is for, you know, your most important. You want to put your most important work there. But anyway, mm -hmm. I noticed I have like two. I mean, four specific, let's say, time chunks, time zones in a day. Right. Two of them for lunch, two of them in the afternoon, right? So yes. early early hours for me. So the first few hours of of after waking up is what I call the input time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was best for me to, to look into things, to learn things, to read, to listen to audiobooks, podcasts, and so things going in. Yes. Then I would hit my peak time, peak time, which was somewhere between you know 9 to 11.30 or so. Right. Um, and that's where I called it the output or synthesizing, or you know, I would do create things. Um, so mm -hmm. make the big, the big progress. If, it's, if I'm writing copy, if I am putting together a program or mind mapping or whatever. So the output for me happens there. Then the early hours after that, the few hours after that is when I get into like a communication mode. Um, I, I talk to other people. So 
um, my I always told my clients if they book their time with me in that during those times, they get my best version. As far mm -hmm. as I am now in like let call it let's call it in, so input mode, output mode, coaching mode, <laughs> right? Mm. And after a few hours of that, then all different parts of my brain are now fried, <laughs> and my body gets into things. So in evening, um, and when I say evening, like let's say around five, four or five p.m. workout is what works for me the best because now mm. my body's like let's let's go let's go let's go to the gym. So I had. Mm. different time zones in a day for different type of activities and uh, after that uh, it's just basically uh, brain dead relax time so i come home dinner maybe uh, i don't know listen to music watch tv read something just let all of that get ready for um, the whole shutting down the day and evening time mm -hmm. until the cycle starts again so that's what i meant by type of work um so have you noticed mm. that for yourself? I usually find that I do my uh, my morning routine between six to eight, six to nine a.m. in the morning, and then um, from then I tend to do a little bit of creative thinking. It's where That's I'll nice. start to. So it it is a creative time for me, but for me, creativity might look different than creativity looks for other people. Like yes. I know people, yes. this would be like their their big writing time or um, something like that. For me, it's uh, planning out how to make different things work together or simplify yeah. work. Or problem solving, um, problem finding solutions. Well, I'll find I can do a lot of my problem solving then. Then around 10 o'clock-ish uh, to noon, um, and then again from 1 to 3 is where I do most of my work work you know mm. product, product development um i actually find some of my best product development or um weird problem solving is stuff that i end up staying up later and mm. doing like after midnight yeah but um but that's kind of like what my day looks like i do know that like about three o'clock i have to either sneak in like a 30 minute uh rest mm -hmm. or um an apple and a 30 mm -hmm. minute rest Something like that, yes. and just kind of munch on, get a little snack, get a little sugar yes, going, yes. and um, just kind of refresh my mind that way. Yeah, that's that's the time of the day that mm -hmm. um, sometimes I use a walk, quick walk yeah. on the block. The last two hours, the, the last two hours of the quote regular work day for most people, yes, can be a little tricky for me. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's that's what came to my mind. So I'm gonna like, experiment more with this. Um, NSDR and and port back. I know I've been I've been experimenting more with my meditations with Ken, which mm. tend to be like a lot deeper. So mm. I either I either have to do them early in the morning, yes, or late at night, because depending, I don't quite know how it's going to hit me. Mm. It might it might actually put me to sleep, because yes. it, it tends to be the kind of meditation that. Um, will either stimulate you or overload you oh tell me if, more what do you mean if that makes sense so like for instance i got done i got done doing this this workshop for ken the other day all i could think of is i'm gonna go to sleep for like three days because <laughs> it, it does it's just, it's just yeah. like wow it's heavy yes. or it can be very heavy and then other times it can just be it just can be very thought-provoking very light um but there's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of downloading, a lot of input going on during mm -hmm. these sessions, and um, so I find it has two two components to it. I never quite I never know which component I'm going to get uh, mm -hmm. hit by. And it's funny, a lot of my classmates are like, "Wow, Ken, that was a that was a deep, you know, a deep transmission during that meditation." Mm -hmm. I mean, I really found myself like it it really didn't it really put me put me down <laughs> kind of thing. and and it yeah. did i mean i was um uh, all i could say to my wife when she got back home from work is like i think i'm gonna have to go to sleep now <laughs> 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 and just kind of recoup and and take in what i've well, had but that's what basically what it is right rearranging yeah. all the you know uh disturbances clutter yeah new perspective and all of that let them to sit in and find themselves um 
so we can well, come back and perform. I found that kind of meditation and you know hypnosis too can yeah. uh, for me is almost like me going on a week's vacation. Aha, uh -huh. which is very, um, which is kind of cool. So it's allowing yeah. me to compress time frames yeah. because you know I'm I'm able to really get relaxed. So um, very unusual stuff. Yeah. So um, if somebody's listening to us, what's your recommendation of the next step for them? Yeah, because we've talked about a lot of stuff today. Yeah. Let me give you uh, mine. Um, yeah. My recommendation is, you know, that whole idea of peak time for different things. Uh, just uh, like what you're doing, as in wh mm. whatever you do, you pay attention. So what? kind of an impact it had, how it changed. So yes. keeping track of, without changing much, just see how you are performing right now, right? Keep track of, it seems that in the morning, this kind of work is easier for me. So, you know, every right. day, four little notes for more early morning, late morning, early afternoon, late afternoon. And just keep track. How did I feel in that part of the day and what I was doing? Mm. How did I feel and what was, and I don't know, a week or two of keeping track of what I was doing and how I was, I was feeling about it. So we notice, hey, every time in the morning when I do this kind of work, it's going really well or not going really well. But when it moved to two in the afternoon, it's now happening. So um, a two weeks of keeping track of what am I doing and how do I feel about it. Um, mm. Some patterns may uh, start to show up and emerge and you see, you know what, what if I move things around this way and find your own peak time the way that things, yeah, yeah, work things work vary and change, change a lot. But I also find that there are times during the day that it's very, very hard for me to um, to accomplish certain types of work. Just mm -hmm. forget about it. It's yeah. just not going to happen at this particular time. Um, and uh, I love that idea. You know, I mean, I think it's, it is, it's super important to figure out what you're best at at what time and what yeah. you can accomplish and get done um it's funny um i when i started getting into into meditation somebody turned me into a really really old book about it called the master key oh and and it's funny as i got as i got reading it and and going through that book yeah. it turns yeah. out that my buddy ken had read the same book and that's what got him interested in meditation many many years before i got started yeah. And so if if you ever if that's something Is it by know, Charles F. Hanel? Yeah, Charles F. Hanel. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I so just uh, Googled it. it. Yeah. That's something that's like of interest to you when you want to learn more about meditation and um, you know, the the um yeah. methodologies behind it and stuff. It's, it's a great book to kind of it's learn. It's nineteen sixteen. That's, that's and old. it's old. Yeah. yeah. But and I see a, uh, I guess it's in the public domain now, and I see a six yes. and a half hour video on it on YouTube. So I'm guessing that's the whole audiobook. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Amazingly, though, very good book. So mm -hmm. if um, if that's something that's of interest, of interest to you and you want to, you know, learn how to meditate yeah. and, and get better at it, then that's a good book. Yeah, I look into it. I also found a, mm -hmm. uh, so I just searched that book the master key that's those are mm -hmm. the words that i put in the search and i found a 28 lesson um uh, playlist yes of, of going through that so introduction lesson one lesson two so that certainly makes it easier mm. but who would yeah. think you know but from 1916. um one of, yeah one we, we have this fascination if it's new it must be good <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> no not so much yeah, not so much. The same thing as we know, um, some of the best copywriting books oh, are yes. books that are very, very old. Mm. So, same idea. Same idea. Same idea. Cool. And I think uh, we did uh, certainly over 30 minutes of yeah, our yeah, call yeah. today. Time, uh, time flew by when we did the conversation. Yes. Yeah. So, anyways, on that oh. note, yes. thanks for joining us, everybody. Yes, and we'll see you uh, next week. Yes. Same day and uh, <laughs> if if you know of uh, something related to what we just talked about, if you know of good playlists or books or tools, mm. methodologies, please share them with us. We will look into it. And yeah, comment below. Put in the comments. Hashtag replay if you're watching this on replay. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, 
uh, we'll bring that up next time. We'll see you next time. Okay. Bye, everyone.